27, Lenny Tristano inspired Minor 251. You can visit the link in the description below to view your free PDF copy of this lesson so you can follow along. In this week's lesson, we'll be looking at a line that I wrote out over a minor 251 that is inspired by the playing of the pianist Lenny Tristano. Um, some recordings that I've been listening to lately that you should definitely check out and that I'll link in the blog um, are C minor complex and G minor complex. Just my two favorite uh, Lenny Tristano solo improvisations. Really great bass lines, really great complicated and interesting harmonies and rhythms. So first, let's take a look at the right hand and analyze sort of what's going on with this line that I've written out. Okay, so in our pickup measure, the first measure that you'll see on the PDF, we have a simple arpeggio of the D half diminished chord. The C sharp acts as a quick chromatic embellishment between the seventh and the root of the chord. It also gets, gives it a little more forward motion than if we were to just play a simple D half diminished arpeggio. Okay, and the next measure, the first measure where we see a chord symbol, um, it is mostly made up of the F melodic minor scale, or the melodic minor scale a minor third above the half diminished chord. It's a very common scale to use for improvising over half diminished chords. So if we were in playing a C half diminished chord, we might think E flat melodic minor starting on C. If we were playing an F half diminished chord, we might think A flat melodic minor starting on um, F. Okay? Now the only difference between the using the melodic minor scale to improvise over half diminished chord and using, say, um, a Locrian scale is a difference um, in the ninth of the chord. So if we were using a Locrian, a Locrian scale, the D Locrian over this chord, the only difference would be the E and the E flat. So if we were using melodic minor, so we have a natural nine using the melodic minor, and we would have a flat nine improvising with Locrian. Keep in mind that when I say melodic minor, I'm thinking the melodic, melodic minor and minor third above the root of the chord. So in this case, it would be F melodic minor. So in this measure we have, and almost all those notes uh, belong to the F melodic minor scale. The ones that don't are simple chromatic embellishments. So let's see what those chromatic embellishments are all about. Here's our first chromatic embellishment. What that does is helps us line up the third the D half diminished chord on the strong beat, the third beat of the measure. It gives a very solid resolution to that chord tone. Otherwise, we would have something like this, which doesn't sound half bad either, but it's not as strong of a resolution. Continue down the F melodic minor, here's another chromatic embellishment, and that's going to lead to the C, the G7 chord we'll explore in a second. So again, repeating from the pickup measure of the arpeggio, down the F melodic minor scale with those two chromatic embellishments. Okay, when we get to the G7 chord, we land on a C natural, which is the fourth of the G7 chord. Not exactly a strong uh, resolving point for the chord. But what it does do is give us a very quick, delayed resolution of the third of the chord. Tristano and his students um, were all about displacing the beat, um, trying to trick the listener into where the beat actually was or where the harmony actually was. So um, he uses a lot of these sort of delayed resolutions. And um, it's something that's also very common in bebop. So we've got this delayed re resolution of the third. Jump up to the flat nine seventh, which essentially is a circling of the root of the chord. Circling of that G, the root. Then we're going down a G7 arpeggio with a flat five. Root, seventh, flat five, third. So again, this measure, delayed resolution of the third. Circle of the root, down the arpeggio. Then we get to the C minor six. We've got a simple minor triad. Third. 
is a C minor triad in second inversion. And then we go to an implied G chord or a G7. Just play a root position G there, resolve to the C. So what that implied G7 does is gives us a quick 1-5-1 one, one progression within the C minor. So it takes us briefly away from the key center and right back. Right. And we can imply that um, without playing the G7 in our left hand at all. But what that makes it sound like is standard C minor triad and then a C minor major triad with a ninth. So you can think of it either way. And the bass line that I've written out actually implies the first way, which is to move to the G7. Okay? So here's the whole line again with uh, brief explanations. Off the basic arpeggio, down the F melodic minor scale with simple chromatic embellishment, delayed resolution of the third, circling up the root, down the arpeggio with a flat five, C minor triad, G triad. Sounds like with the bass line. So before playing this exercise in all 12 keys, I recommend that you do listen to um, the G minor complex and the C minor complex um, recordings that I'm going to link in the blog post. But if you don't have time to do that or to um, listen to some other recordings to really get into the feel of Lenny's right hand um, and left hand, then one thing you can do to really get that propulsive element going, at least in your left hand, is to strongly accent the second and fourth beat of every measure. So here's what it sounds like um, without the accents. <laughs> And that's actually something he plays with a little bit. Um, the accents won't always be on two and four. But if you listen to those recordings, uh, really check out the propulsion, um, the feeling that you get from listening to that left hand bass line. And the propulsion is also there in the right hand too, especially when he starts uh, messing with rhythms um, and really getting into that polyrhythmic thing that he does so well. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I do come out with new videos every single week, so if that's something you might enjoy, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or send me a message through my website. Thanks for watching.